What is up, people? Welcome to the Joe McFoe Show. We're going to get started with another live stream showing all the characters for Shadow Boxers. So let's get the music going real quick. Hopefully I can hear it. There we go. Who else do we have? Kathili is here. Hey, Joe McFoe fam. What's up, Kathili? How you doing? All right. And then I'm going to share my screen. And I want to make sure before I do anything that you guys can actually see it. So can you guys confirm for me in the chat uh, if you guys are actually able to see what we're working on here? Um, so again, this is another character stream. We'll see how far we can get. I think that uh, I got pretty far with my character last time. And today's just probably going to be a lot of like editing and fixing up stuff, probably doing some line work or at least something a little bit slightly more clean um, than what I have here. But ultimately, I think we're we're at that final stage where we're about to have the, the squad basically set to go. So, yeah, Kathy says we have a visual. Excellent. Amanda says have safe travels. Yes, I had safe travels. I slept on the plane. It was fantastic. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. So, yeah, so what we're doing today, we're going to be continuing on Inzi's design. And obviously, we got Javen, who's already been complete. We had Zalam, we have Cairo, and now Inzi is the final character of the group. And I'm really excited about this one uh, because after this, it means I can really start getting back to, I can start getting back to things like the, the actual comic and building out pages for that. Uh, it also means that I could start moving on to doing things like environments and props uh, that, that are part of the world that are going to be pretty significant. And uh, yeah, so so it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh Oh, we got Megan on. She says, hello, Joe McFoe fam. I still can't believe that, that that's like a title, like Joe McFoe fam. I never I never pictured that. So anyway, let's let's get going with this. Uh, I'm going to lower the opacity here. And oh, by the way. Uh, I finally watched the live action Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender, and uh, I'll take a drink to that real quick, get our hydration check going. Uh, so if you guys have questions on my thoughts on it in particular, feel free to ask me. Uh, I don't think everyone here has watched it or even wants to watch it, but I have thoughts on it if you guys want to know. Um, so yeah, Joe, Joe McArmy. I, well, I like Joe McFoe fan, but uh, but that sounds that sounds like I'm trying to start some sort of revolution. Now I don't know if I want to do that. Um, that is a fun one. Okay, so let me do this. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Hairline here. There we go. So I think his pants just have a uh, a just kind of sags a little bit in the front all right so since he's a kid this this character was more childlike more kiddish so i want to keep that aspect there and i want to stick to uh kind of what we were working with let me see what the where the head sketches were i don't even remember where i put them uh i guess it's the exact same drawing Oh, probably the one that's labeled head sketches, probably where I should have started. So we have a lot of um, a lot of round shapes here that we're using. Uh, the face is kind of small. His chin's not very developed. His neck's not very developed. Uh, chronologically speaking, I think he's older than Javen is, but he's one of those, in my mind, he's one of those characters that just doesn't really um, look his age. He's got the baby face of the group, of the group because we got, you know, if you look at everybody, yeah, Javen, who's our main character. Salam clearly looks like he's the oldest. This dude's got like a big old patch of goatee right here. And then Enzi just, uh, <laughs> Enzi's going to be the small runt kind of character, which I think is rather fun. So, yeah. Um, Farmer Fox says, yeah, guy here. Excellent. Thank you for coming on. I hated it. You don't know that for sure. You don't know that. Still haven't finished it. I'm not even going to try to keep count of the hydration checks today. <laughs> McBoxers, McDonald's. Oh, my goodness. McBoxers does sound like a restaurant you could eat in Shiloh. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should have that, McBoxers. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, McBoxers sounds like it belongs in a Happy Meal. <laughs> um, so I will... I, maybe, I don't know. Should I share my thoughts? Is, do, I don't know if we have enough people in the stream for me to care, uh, uh, or not for me to care, for you guys to care. 
right now. Maybe we'll wait until we get some more. I think things are going to be thrown off a little bit because today was daylight savings and some people in other countries might not uh, might not know, um, like might not be aware of that. Um, did I spoil? Wait, what would you have spoiled? I actually don't even know what you would have spoiled. Shiloh? No, that's not a spoiler. That's just the name of the place they live in. All right, so I think for this character, I need to do a version of him with um, with his goggles removed and with him wearing it. So, so yeah, I'll give him a kind of a wide nose. I think actually, no. Um, let's let me see. Let me look at the noses we have here. I want to give everybody something a little different if I can. It basically looks like Zalam, so without that heavy bridge. So I guess that that's fine. And he's, we're not really going to see his lips very much. He's got rounded brows like that. But, sorry. Look is falling over. Well, I know it's not a big deal. It would just be funny if it hadn't been said yet. <laughs> oh, Shiloh is a place. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a place. It is a place. Very prominent. Um, I thought I would have mentioned it in the streams by now. But yeah, it's like their, their capital city in this world. So yeah, for this stream, I think I'm just going to focus on getting this as tight as I can get it to be. I might not do like super clean line art necessarily, uh, but uh, we'll get to a place where hopefully it looks pretty clean. All I have to do is just, you know, take the time and really tighten it up. I usually do that off screen because I, I imagine it's not the most exciting thing to witness, but I don't know. Maybe you guys have different opinions on that. I don't know what's exciting for you guys to watch because I just draw, you know, I just do my thing. So this, these eyes kind of something like this. So what'd you guys do while I was away? What'd you guys been up to? Do anything fun, see anything cool, adopt some new pets. Let's see, move that up. I wanna look at that reference of Pidge again. Where's my stuff here yeah pidge was a pretty solid reference here i like the way this chin looks so uh i think i might try and mimic that actually well, not the chin not the chin i'm at the jaw Get that ear a little bit closer yo what's up jordan what's up man thank you for coming on dude how have you been? Ang. <laughs> what is what is what does that mean? I don't know what that means. You gotta give me more context. Okay, so one thing that I can also do here, I should probably redraw the body or at least get a solid wait do these layers have anything on them oh it's way over here there we go there we go let's copy that move that over here yeah I gotta draw the clothes First, so let's get a nice strong reference of that, and then why? There we go. Pretty 
pretty cool. Been getting my practice up and slacking though. How okay? How are you been getting your practice up and slacking at the same time? Help me understand that. <laughs> um, well, Greg, my dog ate through his metal cage and wreaked havoc on my living room and destroyed my couch. Oh my gosh! I am sorry about that. That's unfortunate. I, Greg, Greg needs a timeout. Also, Greg, as a name for a dog, is highly unusual. Has anyone ever met a dog named Greg before? I have not heard that. And then Kathy said, don't forget to leave a big old thumbs up. Yes, please, guys, leave a thumbs up for the channel. It boosts um, it boosts my self-esteem greatly, and I would very much appreciate it. Okay, get that for the rib cage. I might end up changing aspects of the face. We'll see. Um, yeah, I think this neck is also probably a little too much on the wide side here. Let's do, yeah, let's get some smaller. I want to try and get better with exaggerating my characters. But not so much that it breaks the immersion of the style, but things like this I could probably get away with. At least I hope I can. I don't know. Maybe I'll get called out. People get called out for a lot of stuff nowadays. I might get called out for that. His eyes were a little too big, felt a little too kiddish. And I'm really looking at this reference here from the movie Roll Bounce. I think this is Cleo Thomas, especially for his uh, his arms. He's a very uh, frail lad, I would say. Who's the stronger lead character, Aang or Miles Morales? Okay, so that's a first off. Who's the stronger lead character? Um, I think probably Aang is my first pick because, well, for one, there's two. There are two different stories. First of all, with with Miles Morales as a character, you have a bunch of adventures. Like he he's a that's a character driven story more than, I guess, a plot-driven story, in my opinion. Um, not to say Avatar doesn't have great characters, but you can put Miles Morales in just about any story and it'll be fine. With Aang, you have a very specific, tight um, story that you're telling with, especially with the original series. Um, so I think for that reason, it probably makes him more of a standout lead character because he has a very specific mission from the beginning. Um, and... Yeah, I, th I think that's probably my my take on that. But what do you guys think? Do you think that um, Miles is a stronger main character or a stronger lead character? And this is not saying like that means that one's a bad character or something. I think it's just about you know the context on how how it all comes together. You know. body down so I have him as a, a smaller guy his frame is not that different from Zalam I think probably just shorter really this is like the last guy you choose on a basketball team when you're doing the lineup you know Mega says, ooh, that was a spicy question. What do you guys think? Wait, am, I, am I incorrect? Am I wrong? I'm very curious. I'm very, very curious. Okay, 
Let's get that. Hand. Have that overlap be strong enough. I think, I think that works. Hand might be a little small. Doing bent arms are always a little tricky. So it's hard to tell like how far to let the hand or let the elbow stick out. You know? I know, I thought it was going to be tougher for Jordan to answer. <laughs> I can't answer, haven't read any of the Spider-Verse comments. See, that's the thing, like, we, we, that's funny that you thought it'd be hard for me to answer. Um, but the thing, yeah, with Miles, it, he's a totally different character because he's a different, it's a different context, you know? Like, like Spider-Man, he can be in so many different stories. Aang really only has one. Um, I mean, yeah, I know there's the comics, but that's not really, that was never the intention in my opinion. I think they did that because of the success of the show and, you know, just, hey, let's make more, let's add more story to it uh, because the world building is so wonderful. But that was never the original goal, you know, and uh, like, I don't know where Javen's going to fit in, in that category. If he hopefully he'll come out and people think he's a very strong main character. Um, but I also have kind of designed him to really exist for this one specific story. You know, so if there comes a day where I either for financial <laughs> reasons or just because I like the character so much, decide to want to make more, then that's something I'm going to have to really think about. It's like, okay, how do I add to him uh, after this main saga is over? You know? Um, and who knows? There, I mean, there might be, there might be room for that. I, I've thought about ideas about how to expand beyond just in case something happens. You know, I, I think everything is being, everything's trying to be franchised. You know, there's doing, there's people doing a lot of stuff like, hey, we need to build up a multiverse and we need to do this and that. Probably the multiverse craze is ending at this point, I, I would imagine, but, or, or it's like on oh, its last leg. But sometimes you just want a project to just be done and let it exist for what it is. Like Calvin and Hobbes to me is an example of that. Like, I love Calvin Hobbes and I part of me would love for there to be more comics just because I love it so much. But there's also something about it that is so beloved, I think, because it has an end. And um, you know, knowing that you can keep that kind of thing sacred is um yeah, it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. No, Jordan Miles Miles Morales came first in the comics. Wait, what? What do you mean he came first in the comics? Do I want his hand to be here? I wonder. But wait, let me see what pose I gave him. Hmm. I was debating if I should have his hand like up holding like the strap he has, but maybe not. I think it's fine. All right, so one thing, I made his arms way too thin. So instead of redrawing it, I'm just gonna lasso it and I'm just gonna pull, pull that out a little bit more. Makes my life a little bit easier. And also I'm gonna tone down the shoulders. Make it not. Make it seem so, uh, make him seem not so muscular. Redraw this collar, collarbone or the clavicle. He was an existing character before Spider Verse. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but what I'm saying is like his stories, in my mind, from what I've seen, are more random. Like he, he, uh, Because when I think of strong lead character, I think of like this closed plot and like, let's see what he does with that. Um, be, I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I think of it. And I'm, I'm aware that he existed way before the Spider-Verse movies and stuff. Um, but it's just the way that I kind of see that personally. 
Amanda says, I wish Full Metal would continue, but I also love the finality and they ruined Harry Potter with the Cursed Child. So I've never seen the um, later Harry Potter stuff. To me, that series ended with Deathly Hallows and I'm totally okay with that. And um, I've heard mixed reviews from people about the updated Harry Potter stuff uh, for that reason exactly. It's like that, that story is so is told in such a way where I feel like it'd be hard to add unless you want to do it from the perspective of a smaller character and do um, do like smaller adventures, something that's not quite on the scale as, you know, the battle for Hogwarts or whatever. Like that's that's one thing. Um, OK, something about this doesn't feel right. Um, hold on, let me check. Let me check this out. The feet are definitely too big. Let's scale those back a bit. That's one thing I noticed. Sometimes I draw the feet a little too big for characters sometimes. And I think I can make him just a little wider. He can still be puny, but uh, I don't want him to be like Zalam. Like Zalam is meant to be a little bit more exaggerated in terms of his lankiness. Here, the guy is a little bit more average build. But like slightly lanky. Slightly. Megan's like, I see, I see. Hi, Joe. What's up, Kaylin? Thank you for coming on. How you doing, my friend? Hello, hello. Sorry I'm late. No hour saving here. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. I had a feeling that that would probably happen. Um, oh, what's up, Adrian? Thanks for coming on. Much appreciated. Hey, Lily and Caitlin. Everybody's in the house. Okay, so now we have enough people where I guess I can share my thoughts on the Avatar, uh, The Last Airbender show. Um, by the way, uh, I know we got some new faces on. I know Adrian's new to the stream. So I would just say this. Anytime, we, we have a hydration game. So anytime I mention Avatar, Spider-Man, or uh, I think Jack and Daxter, we take a drink of water because one, I don't drink. Two, if I did, I'd be dead by the end of the stream because I talk about it so much. And three, we should all be keeping up with our hydration. So, so with that said, um, my thoughts on Avatar. I, If I were to overall rank this show, I would give it like a six and a half to a seven out of 10. Um, the things I'll start with the things I think they did well. Um, I think that the casting was really good. I think that the sets were really cool. And I also liked the way that they combined certain episodes uh, because realistically trying to condense 20 episodes of an animated show um, into eight episodes is very challenging. And I, I actually blame Netflix more than the like the creators or the showrunners, because they're the ones who set the episode like production limit, right? I think they would have need at least ten to twelve episodes really to like do it fully. So that's one thing. Um, with that said, I do like how they combine certain things. And um, should I wait, should I do spoilers or or no? What do you got? What do you guys want? Because, I mean, if you've seen the first season, you know basically what happens. It's really just a remix of certain things. So um, what, do you, what do you guys what do you guys think? Kaylin says, OMG, can't wait to hear your thoughts. Yes, stay hydrated, my friends. <laughs> um, yeah, so what, do, what, do you, what should I do? A spoiler free or a spoiler review? I'm good with spoilers. Anyone else? OK, so we got one. One with spoilers is good. I feel like the people who aren't going to who who would say um, they don't want spoilers, the people who probably wouldn't watch it anyway. <laughs> um, I don't want to speak for others, but I don't mind spoilers. OK, so with those two, um, they say in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So let's let's do spoilers. So I think my favorite change that they did for the show was Zuko's crew. One of the things um one of the things that I really liked was, you know, in, in the show, Zuko speaks out against his father uh, and doesn't want to sacrifice the crew members for the Fire Nation. And 
what they did in the Netflix series, which I thought was great, was they ended up making that his crew on the ship. And so there's that scene, which is very similar to the original show, where uh, Zuko is about to lose Aang because, you know, Zhao's captured him and stuff. And they're pissed off at Zuko. And they're like, he doesn't care about us. And Iroh just goes like, he cares about you more than you think. And um, and turns out that, like, because he spoke out when he was banished, he's like, you know what? Take this crew with you since you care about them so much. Um, so I thought that was brilliant. I actually... I actually wish that was in the original show because I, I think that works really, really well. Um, I don't think it it's um, it's something that is a you know make or break for the show. But I thought that was a really great example of something that they could change to make it better. Um, okay, let me just check in on this, see how the body's going. Um, something still doesn't feel right with this arm. I'm, I might spend quite a bit of time on the body, guys. Um, just because if I don't get this right, then me drawing the clothes and the costume just won't matter. Um, so, okay, anyway, going on to the next stuff. Uh, I think also that it was a really good idea for them to include like this, so like this comet festival that, uh, that they were doing, like they, they introduced it in a way where they had all the airbenders coming to the Southern Air Temple specifically for this comet festival, which I think is a great change. And it makes sense like, okay, instead of going to all the air temples, they just go to that one because they're all right there. I think that makes good sense. Um, and uh, I also think it helps to see more of the airbender culture. Um, the one thing about that that makes it kind of tough though, is it removes a lot of the mystery of Aang. Like when you watch the series for the first time, the animated series, a lot of Aang is a mystery because he's just this random boy in an iceberg. And so you have to kind of learn slowly. Whereas in this series, what they did is they kind of gave you everything you need to know about Aang right up front. You, you get the fact that he's fun loving, sort of. <laughs> um, you get the uh, you get the air nomad culture uh, and you get to see, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff. You also get to see the attack that the Fire Nation put on uh, Sozin's Comet, or I'm sorry, you get to see the attack that Fire Nation put on the Airbenders, which I thought was pretty cool, like seeing that battle. Um, I would have liked for them to make it more ambiguous as to the results. Like you get to, like you see them fighting and like taking everybody out, but I thought it would be cool for people who are newcomers to the show if they left it more ambiguous. Uh, like you see them fighting and then they just kind of cut it and you don't really know, especially when you see Gyatso. Uh, I thought that that would have been a good shift that they had made that decision, but they didn't. Um, also, the intro scene was really cool. I really liked the intro scene. It was dark. It was gritty. Uh, you get to see like them using their bending and stuff. I thought that was really dope. Um, Amanda says, I think they wrote Katara dirty, though. The little did fine with what they gave her. Yeah, so here's the thing. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think the actors did their thing. I think that they, considering what they were given, I think they all did a great job, but I think the weakest part about it all was definitely the writing. The writing was not that strong. Uh, there was a lot of moments where I was like, like, this doesn't make sense. Like, like Grand Grand is reduced to this being an exposition dump, and I hated that. I was so irritated. I was like, how do you know this information? Like, how do you know he's the avatar? How do you know he's last airbender, right? So, um, so yeah, that, that kind of bothered me a bit. Lily says, take your time, fine-tuning the proportions. It'll be the turnaround later after all. That is true. I, I don't know if I'm going to do a full turnaround with him. I might do at least uh, like a three-quarter rear view. But um, yeah, I, I need to do it because otherwise the whole thing is going to be off. So we'll see how far we get. And we got me talking about Avatar. And this is one of those things where we can't even keep track of the hydration checks because I'm just going to share all my thoughts and just spill them out. I was waiting for this stream to share because I know you guys would want to hear what I thought of it. Mm. Okay, so what else? Um, yeah, I think they did Katara dirty. I, I don't like what they did with her. Um, oh, one thing that also really bothered me. It's based off of season one. The whole point of season one, the original show, is for Aang to learn waterbending. He does not waterbend the entire season. That bugs me with the exception of the very end when he's in the Avatar state with like the Koi Zilla monster thing. That's the only time you really see him waterbend. He doesn't learn it. So that that bothered me uh, quite a bit. Um, 
let me see i'm just gonna go off the cuff like i i can't put this in order of like what i like dislike and all that stuff um one change i, I did like was they gave grand grand the waterbending scroll and and she gave it to katara before she went to save ang which i thought was good you know the waterbending scroll is an episode um you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Like they get the scroll, but besides that, that's it. So I, I think that that um, worked really well. Um, I like Sokka. I like how they're treating Sokka. I know that a lot of people were really upset with um, the change with the, the sexism aspect because they revoked that aspect of his character. Um, I didn't really, it, it's, it's tricky because it's a big part of his character journey in the original. In this, I don't know if it was necessary. Uh, I think they were able to get around it just fine. He's still quirky. He's still fun in a lot of ways. Um, so I was fine with that. Um, I think Zuko's doing pretty pretty good. Uh, uh, Dallas Liu, as the actor for him, I think he's doing fine. Um, my, my, I had a friend who commented and said that he didn't feel like he was conf uh, confident enough of Zuko. Um, I'd have to ask him more of his thoughts on that, what, what that means exactly. But uh, that was one comment that he he shared. And so, um, yeah, I, th I think he does fine with that. Um, what else? I'm I'm mixed on the bending. I will say that the bending is kind of a mixed bag for me. I don't like the way it looks because it looks kind of they, they do it kind of weak. Like when they're fire bending, instead of them doing jabs like this, like is meant to be, they have their palms open. And so when you just do this for a long time, it just looks kind of cheap. Uh, so I hope they adjust that in season two and three. Um, I read somewhere that the episode dealing with Zuko's crew was written by Bright. I heard about that too, actually. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I did hear that. Um, I, and I think there's like one other change that supposedly they made. Um, I'm still very curious as to what exactly made them want to leave. Um, you know, because I heard some rumors back a while ago that the show was going to be like about a school and that there weren't going to be benders. And it was like a really weird take. I think I saw it in like CBR website or something. But, uh, but you know, I take what they say with a grain of salt anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see. Um, Adrian says, Oh, that does seem cheap. Yeah, it is a little cheap. It was a little cheap. Zuko, the dude. Who so it's funny. So I, um, some of you guys may or may not know, I interviewed Sifu Kisu a couple of years ago. The key's the guy who basically was the martial arts consultant behind Avatar. And I follow, and I'm friends with him on Facebook. And I saw him post that he thought Zuko's fire, fire bending was so lame. But it's funny because I'm like, man, he looked like one of the best benders in the show. Like he's doing all these acrobatic moves. And I'm like, okay, I can get into this. But to be fair, Sifu Kisu is like a martial arts expert. And so, you know, <laughs> I expect him to be a little bit more harsh on stuff like that, which is fine. It's not an issue. Um, let's see. What else? Um, some of the combination of episodes that they did, I thought were really cool. So they combined um, the episode with Omashu, Jet, the Cave of Two Lovers, and the Northern Air Temple together in one place, which I thought was pretty wild. Um, the... So the way they did that, they had Jet be the person who sneaks the men to Omashu, and then what? And then the, the mechanist from Northern Air Temple, uh, which is one of the reasons they go to the places they have, um, which I'm gonna call it. Um, uh, they see Tail on the glider, and Aang's like, "Oh, we see it. There's another Airbender. They're not all gone." Which, you know, story wise, actually makes sense for putting it there because he just was devastated, right? Um, so the way that, so they combine that and then they have Jet trying to kill the mechanist and, uh, and that gets them connected with the Earth King, which is Boomy, or not, I'm sorry, not Earth King, but the King of Omashu, which is Boomy. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, maybe some clips from your interview would do well on social media right now. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's on my... I think it's on my Instagram somewhere. I, I gotta go dig it up because that's from when I was back in San Francisco. So that interview, when was that? Twenty, might have been twenty twenty. 
either 2020 or 2021. I can't remember the exact year, but it was definitely at least two or three years ago. Mm. So I think it's a little afro. <laughs> this is fun. All right. So um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, I think the way they combined the episodes was good. The thing about the jet section, though, is a lot of the success of that episode originally was I think that was actually Sokka's episode in my opinion from the original like that was when Sokka was being kind of demeaned a little bit by Aang and Katara they were kind of um they they, they were kind of making fun of him because if I remember correctly he, they were saying he wasn't really a leader um and they're and he they're, they had the whole joke about Sokka's instincts um you know but the, he's not really present in that section that much um i mean they 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 do interact they do interact but it's very very little so that's something that was an interesting change um let's see cave of two lovers i thought was funny um it plays out very similarly and that they did in the show with the exception that it was uh katara and Sokka in there and they were just arguing and then they had to you know break up the the fight together in order to get out um i did not like what they did with boomy i didn't like what they did with boomy at all um they basically made him this kind of basically a jerk um like he was kind of disgruntled because he's like ang you're the avatar and you know you left us while the fire nation like took over and it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me like he's still kooky but it's like he's just mean like he's just genuinely like not likable um whereas in the original it was i thought that was fine because he's just messing with ang he's just like hey i got you you know and uh, you'll need your friends along the way but one of the themes that they're sticking with is you know the power of friendship uh which i know is like quite the joke you know like the power of friendship saves it all saves us all they're really playing with that a lot and so um because all the past avatars are telling, hey, you have to do it by yourself. You can't, you know, can't be connected with these people. Um, and Aang's like, no, but my friends helped me, you know. Um, let me see. What else do you guys want to know about with the show? I'll just, I, I'll ramble, but I want to know what you, um, what you guys want me to tell you about. I did like him holding that lettuce leaf, though. Yeah, that was good. They, they have a lot of good Easter eggs moments. They had the cabbage merchant in there. Um, there was one scene in there when you when Sokka meets Yue, and there and in the scene, like she's helping Aang in the Avatar state, and Aang's like coming out of his uh, I don't know what you want to call it, his uh, trance or something. And you can hear Sokka muttering, oh, it's supposed to be a, a fish, but it looks like a bear or something, which I thought was a good callback because the original, he sculpted something for her and it became like a whole scene, but you hear him muttering that. I thought that was a little cool moment. Like it's something that only the fans, like the real fans would recognize and catch. So I thought that was dope. Um, I might want to change that eye shape on NZ right now. Um, Let's see, Aang. Oh, yeah, let's talk about Aang. Uh, I like Aang. I, I think that he's doing a pretty good job with it. I, I think the actor uh, really embodies the spirit of who Aang's supposed to be so much more than Noah Ringer, who was the previous live action incarnation. Uh, mostly in the fact that he feels like a kid. He feels like a kid who's fun. Uh, he can overact a little bit, but I think that's more due to the writing than his acting ability. Um, cause he's, he's fine, I think. Um, and he's very fun and charming. He looks the part. Um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's, I think he's doing pretty good. Does Sokka have his boomerang? Yes, he has his boomerang and he has the club that, that he has. To be fair, and I'm not saying they did this well, I haven't seen it. There's this part where the guru tells Aang to leave Katara and he won't. Um, yeah, that's true. That is true. So I think probably what they're doing is like, well, now, so now we know they're getting a season two and three, and I actually didn't make that connection. But um, yeah, maybe they're just leading up to that a little bit more um, so that it, if it has a proper buildup. I'm not sure. Momo, though, I was shocked what I thought they were going to 
I was shocked what I thought they were going to do. Oh yeah. That, that scene was, was pretty interesting. Um, Sokka and Momo don't get along. He's like, Momo's a nuisance, which I think is fine. That's not a big deal for me. Uh, um, what else? What else is in there? Um, Suki was fun. I liked how they did what they did with Suki. They kind of made her this, uh, they kind of made her socially awkward with Sokka, which I thought was kind of fun to watch. Um, which I think is actually okay because even in the original, I thought that their relationship was very quickly developed, like a little unnaturally fast. And same with UA, it was unnaturally fast. And so I think they took the time to really develop that a little bit more. Um, there was one scene though, where she's taking off her makeup and I swear in one shot, she has her full face of makeup. And then she, she does like one wipe and then she turns around, all her makeup is gone. And I was like, nah, cause I can't, you can't even get lotion to clear up that quickly on your face. You're talking about a whole thing of like Kiyoshi warrior makeup. Nah, that's not, <laughs> that's not happening. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, unintentionally, uh, what else? Uh, they have a lot of scenes with Iroh and Aang in it, which I thought was cool. I thought that was a good little mix. And they also really show Iroh's, I guess, brutality a bit more. Like they, they have a whole scene where this earthbender is, uh, when, when Iroh gets captured, uh, they have this whole scene where an earthbender is like, yeah, you killed my brother. He was just 19 years old. And I was just like, look, look, man, that's war. And he's just like, he's just like cold about it, which I, I think is, it makes sense. It's very different from the original that we all know and love, but I, I do like how, how Iroh is. He definitely still loves tea, um, you know, so that's fun. He's got a jolly side to him, but uh, yeah, there's definitely that. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, one thing that, that is a little annoying though, I know I, I said I like their sets a lot, but it is a bit distracting sometimes um, because their camera changes, like the lens just uh, focus gets goes in and out sometimes. And it's a little weird. And there are times where you can tell exactly what the type of set is because I don't know what it's called. One of you guys can tell me and look it up, but the way they're set is they have this little stage right here and then they have this big like 360 um screen like and they can put all the effects and stuff that they want and you can tell sometimes where it ends and where the screen begins and that that's kind of annoying sometimes like they're clearly not on location and especially when they're in the water tribes they didn't take the effort to like put um the what do, what do you call it when you breathe in the cold and you see your breath? I don't know what that word is exactly, but they should have taken the time to do that, <laughs> I think, or put them in a place where it's cold uh, just for that. Because it is a bit distracting and, and like it breaks the immersion a bit when they're in the snow and, um, you know, they you don't see their breath in the cold. And uh, oh, and also their clothes look perfectly pristine. That's another thing that I think they could have adjusted, which is something that I think older films do well. Like they did this with Indiana Jones, like for his hat, for the Indiana Jones hat, they, I, I watched the behind the scenes video where they were talking about how they sat on it. They ran over it and, you know, they beat it. They did all this stuff <laughs> to make it feel like a worn hat and it comes across. But when you watch the show, everyone looks like they came from the cleaners. There's no wrinkles, there's no dirt, no nothing. And that can be a bit distracting um, and I know that, that they're trying to make it a um, a bright, colorful, you, you know, thing, which is not a bad call necessarily because the original was so gray and it kind of bothered me and probably a lot of other people. But I think they probably took it a little too far with that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I think I'm at a place where I like his proportions overall. He feels kind of um, feel kind of right. I don't know if I'm going to change the face or not. I probably will. There's something about it that uh, that doesn't quite sit with me. I think it might be the, the eyes being a little too big, but I think overall he's getting there. I can at least take this and draw the clothes on top, and I can adjust things like the chin and the eyes. 
And if there's time, I'll draw his goggles on top or at least a sketch. I'll probably have to do something where I create the goggles separately as another prop entirely. Uh, but we'll see how far we get. So let's first change the color. And I'm going to relabel this new body. So yeah, and again, for those of you guys who may be new to the stream, uh, the reason I draw the, the nude body first is because the clothes have to obey what the body does. And, you know, just like when you put on a shirt, if it's too small, you know, right? It fits you a certain way or doesn't fit you. If the shirt's too big, that also fits you a certain way. If, you know, if you have larger arms, if you have, you know, a large stomach or, you know, thighs, or whatever the case is, you have to design the character's frame first. And that way you can build on top of that. Willie Sapphire says bright colorful things still get mud everywhere look at any active kid or teen exactly so I think they really could have taken some time to really uh, make it look like they were in a world that had been like that they were lived in, living in right mm. let's see what else can I think of um, um hmm Oh, yeah, I, I'll be honest. The Siege of the North, like the, the lore with the, the moon spirit and everything was always a little confusing for me. I, I didn't really uh, I didn't really get it in the show, in the original either. But I don't like the, the adjustments that they made there either. Like, I actually don't even think I can explain it to you guys, like the logic behind it. So I'm, I might leave the rest of it alone. But, but yeah, that part was a bit confusing for me and uh one thing oh one thing that did bother me so they so the scene where Zhao has the the koi fish in the bag Iroh comes in he's like he's just like the show the original he's like I was Zhao whatever you do to that fish I'll release I'll unleash on you tenfold and then he just stands there for like 30 seconds watching him like contemplate what to do <laughs> and I'm like dude you just said <laughs> you just said that you would unleash this fury on him and you're standing there watching. And I think, I don't know if it's the editing that made it bad, but he, or, or just um, what it was, but that was not a good, that was not a good decision to have it like that, especially because he's within frame. It'd be one thing if he was being held back by firebenders or something like that, or like the army, but it was kind of, it was kind of bizarre. Um, Let's see. I agree. He looks very innocent. Spoiler, he's not terribly innocent in the cipher. <laughs> well, thank you, Megan. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I should make him a little bit more grungy. I don't know what, what you want to call it. Uh, what did I think of Zhao? Okay, I'll answer that in just a second. Um, I thought you guys got rid of daylight savings. I'd like to talk to the manager. I'm fight slash talk to the manager. Uh, I'm sorry, bro. Sorry. You can watch the first 49 minutes we've been talking a lot of avatar so we probably gone through like three bottles of water worth and i can't keep up <laughs> uh good morning though thank you for coming on so okay to answer the question what i think of Zhao, i i like Zhao. um i thought he was pretty cool i think uh there's part part of me that's a little nostalgic because he's the same dude who played sang and rush hour movies or the or movie first rush hour because he died um so i thought that was really fun uh and i think he's playing his role well um yeah I, I don't have any issues with him uh oh you know what i should talk about azula and the crew um yeah everyone thought we thought we got rid of it um <laughs> sorry i i have no control over that mark my apologies bro but um so azula I think they're I think she's fine. The one thing that throws things off for me is she's like a 21-year-old actress and she has such a baby face. She has a lot of <laughs> she has a lot of uh roundness in her in her features, which I know she's not a character, as in like a drawing. Like you can't just change certain things. But I almost wish they didn't cast that specific actress for that reason. Like, I would love to see someone with more sharp features because it does make a big impact. Because it, it's almost hard to take her seriously as Azula because of that. And so, um, so yeah, that, that kind of bugs me. But that's, 
that's just kind of one of those things like okay you, you get what you get oh no i, I wasn't even iro there it was when Zhao was explained to Iroh on the way the Oasis, Iroh would have taken him right then and there. No, they were in the Oasis. They were already there. Um, and he'd ar I think he already had the fish out um, at that point. I'm pretty sure. Because I, I just watched like three nights ago. So, um, yeah. But, but yeah, that, that bugged me. Um, so Azula, I think what they're doing is setting up her kind of, I guess, psychosis. Um, the, the issue she's had with, with her dad and stuff or maybe not her dad but um with her mental health pretty early on because you could tell she's like got the perfectionist mode going they're definitely showing that um i don't like the actress for may she's not she she's not uh gloomy enough for me just yet maybe they'll change it later but I, i'm not really a fan of may ty lee i think is great i think the actress playing her looks the part like she really looks like ty lee and uh so i'm actually really excited to see her they don't do anything like significant with them like there's no action scenes um but uh yeah um oh one change that they made to the show which i wasn't expecting um they burn people alive <laughs> they they the fire nation is real ruthless like you can tell they don't have the restrictions of the kids network anymore and I kind of like that change. Like, not that I enjoy seeing people burned alive or anything, but it makes a lot of sense that the Fire Nation would do that. And so, um, for like a grittier take on this world, I think that that was a good thing. And that's in the first scene. That's not. Uh, that's not something that's you're gonna wait long to see. And um, yeah, yeah. But I thought that was a pretty gritty take on it, which I'm fine with. They also threw in a couple of curse words, or if you wouldn't call them curse words. They, they threw in a couple, you know, three and four letter words, which Nickelodeon wouldn't have on there, which was, which was kind of interesting. Um, not that I'm offended by it, but it's just like, oh, okay, you know, that's the world we're in now. Um, but um, what else? What else? Like I said, I'm rambling, but is there what other things you guys want me to reveal about my thoughts about the show? Okay, real quick, as you guys type in the chat, I'm gonna close the blinds because we gotta get the, the right vibes going over here. I try I try and get like a nice glowy effect because it's shadow boxers, you know, so no, it's too dark. Let's see, does this go any brighter? Uh, I guess it's I guess it's not bright enough. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. I'll do something. Um, let's see. Lily says being war times makes sense. Foul language just happens at times. Yeah, it's fine. I, like it's not a change. Where I'm like, oh my gosh, how could you? It's like I get it. You know, and there are some moments, even the original, where it's very clearly for kids and it's talking about war. They talk about mat mature stuff in there, but you could tell. You could tell. It's not even dark. What daylight are you saving? <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, it's uh, it just the sun is just setting. So yeah, it's still a little bright. I closed the blinds preemptively just so we can get some of the glow, you know, shower boxes glow and stuff. It just it fits the theme, y'all. It fits the theme. You're right about the Oasis scene. I'm talking about on the balloon when they were headed there, and Zhao was explained to Iroh that he was going to do Iroh. Wait, he was going to do Iro on the TV show was like thumbs up until the Oasis scene. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Mm. Um let's see. Oh, oh, okay. Let me talk about my least favorite episode with you guys, by the way. My least favorite episode. Let me look at the episode. I'll, I'll give you the episode number. Just give me a second. I'll look it up. Um, but it was the Spirit World episodes that they had. Um, I know I spelled Netflix wrong. Um, episode. I think Spirited Away, episode five. That one was not that great. My favorite episode was Mask. It was exactly like the Blue Spirit episode. I think. I actually think they copied the shots, like almost 
like there were several places where I was like, this is shot for shot exactly the Blue Spirit episode. So I think that was great. And um, but yeah, so, so episode five, basically what happens is they come across um, the uh, the forest that was burned down uh, that Heibai is in control of. And while Aang is going into the spirit world, somehow he brings Katara and Sokka along with him, which is a little weird. I don't understand that logic at all. But somehow they get trapped, uh, just like how Sokka got trapped in the spirit world. Now it's both of them. And what they did, I actually did like this part where, be, because in the Blue Spirit episode, which is next, and you know it's connected, uh, Aang and I'm sorry, Katara and Sokka were both sick. And so Aang's kind of on his own. And that was, I think, their way of doing that and connecting with the spirit world, which I think that's a fine change. I, I think it's okay. I just don't like how they did it. <laughs> um, like, as in, like, Aang, just his power. His, the, I think the reason was like, my, the spiritual energies are so powerful. I brought you two with me. I was like, no, I don't like that. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense to me. But whatever. Um, so... So yeah, the reason I didn't like the Spirited Away episode is because they kind of nerfed Ko, the face stealer. He's like the villain of the episode. Um, and they changed the whole thing about keeping a straight face with Ko uh, for some reason. He does look creepy, especially when he's changing faces. It's like, ew, it's, it's like wet and gross looking. It's like, it's disturbing. Um, and the, the color grading on it also really adds to that as well. Um, but uh yeah but they did add one thing from the comics which that was kind of cool they add the they added the mother of faces which canonically i believe is the mother of ko and uh the mother of faces she's from the 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 search comic trilogy from like 2013 or 14. so i thought that was pretty cool um but yeah the the way they did all that was kind of bizarre um I also, I will say this one thing I did like about that though, they were, they had the fog of lost souls, which is a concept from the legend of Korra, which I was actually kind of surprised about. They had that as a concept and they had Sokka and Katara haunted by their former memories. Katara's obviously was what they showed in the Southern Raiders episode where she sees her mom die. Um, and I thought they did that pretty well. Uh, Sokka, his trauma they changed Hakoda for this. Basically, Sokka um, overhears his dad saying that like Sokka's not gonna be a good leader because he did like he f he basically was terrible at his, like his ice dodging challenge or whatever. They did that in the episode Bato the Water Tribe, um, in the original. So yeah, I, I didn't really. I don't know how I feel about that change. It, it did make Sokka really. It did make it really sad, but I don't know if I like that change very much. Um, but uh, but yeah, the overall issue with the episode was just it just didn't it changed it a little too much for me, and uh, some of the writing associated with it didn't work very well in my opinion. Um, okay, here, okay, oh, yeah, it's got pockets, and then and then what they did they connected that with the fire sages. Um, I thought that that was that was okay. That was okay. Um, it was a little unbelievable that Ang flew all the way there on his glider because he left he left Appa and Momo to watch over Sok and Katara. But I'm like, dude, you flew from the Earth came to the Fire Nation on your glider in in one go, and he fly has to fly all the way back. I'm like, that that somehow doesn't seem right. But okay, whatever. They don't really show exactly how far, so maybe it's feasible. But I was like, eh. Things I liked about the show, the powers and the effects, Sokka's voice, <laughs> it had more monsters and creatures than The Witcher. Never seen The Witcher, so I can't really say. But um, but yeah, they did have a lot of monsters in there. I thought Heibai looked really cool. I thought he looked epic. Christian, what's up, my, my dude? How's it going, man? Um, I did find it interesting that they pulled from the comics with the Mother of Faces and Quarrel with the Fog in the Spirits episode. Like That, that kind of change is fine with me because it's, it's still based on the avatar lord that's definitely good fan service you know so yeah but it's just the overall the way they changed up the spirit world i didn't really care for it very much um 
Oh, they changed up UA a lot too. That was kind of interesting. Um, some of it I liked, and like, oh, maybe maybe liked is too strong of a word. I had mixed feelings on some of it. Uh, what is this? What am I making here? I think it's gonna be a backpack. I don't know why I made like this tube. So let's just make it. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna find a reference of a backpack to use. Um, yeah. So with UA, first off, they made her a bender, um, which was interesting. Um, that wasn't it wasn't super important, but I I think. They actually did add a scene in here that made more sense than the original because they actually gave Sokka and Yue a chance to really connect truly. Um, and I mean, the original, I guess it works fine, but I, I feel like the scene here, it was very clear that they like each other and they had a good reason as to why uh, even Yue liked him. Um, let's see. Um, it looks like they cut out the part to, speaking of the War, Northern Wire Tribe, they cut out the part where Paku was in love with uh, Gran Gran. Uh, there's no comma on the betrothal ne necklace. Um, but the fight between Katara and Paku was pretty cool. They actually do a pretty good shot for shot in that fight. Um, yeah, they do a pretty good, um, pretty good job. But they, the one thing I didn't like was that they, they cut out all the training. So like I mentioned before, Aang does not waterbend the entire season. And Katara, she still battles Paku. Like, she chills, she still challenges him. Um, but then he calls her, like, a master, like, five minutes later. So they don't have that training that they do in the original show, which I didn't like. And it made it seem like she didn't quite earn it, the, the title of master. Because in the show, it was or the original show, it was like... It was implied that they've been there for a couple of weeks before they um the battle of the, the with the fire nation and Paco goes like you've trained and you've learned faster than anyone i've ever trained i've ever taught and like she earns it to me there just with that those little lines but with this it's so fast that i don't think this katara really deserves that and that kind of bothers me a bit so so yeah um have you heard the theory that if Aang didn't stay in the iceberg for 100 years, Yue would have been the next avatar with her connection to the spirits? I have heard that theory. Um, uh, I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. Um, yeah, I could see that. That's not a problem. I, get, I mean, we wouldn't have Korra, um, but, I, but based on some people's uh, opinion of Korra, maybe they like that better. <laughs> I personally, you know, you guys know me. I, I, I like the show. I like Korra. It's just fine. Um, obviously not as good as the original, but, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, so those are, I think my thoughts, I think I've been going on for like an hour talking about this. So overall, like I said, at the beginning, I would give the show an overall six and a half to seven out of 10. I think that they have a good groundwork. I, I, I anticipate watching the next two seasons. I don't think I'm just going to, I'm not going to stop watching it definitely um didn't exceed the original but i kind of we all knew that going in it wasn't going to do that um i i like some of the changes they made i think if they adjust some of the writing and hopefully if they get more episodes to flesh out things a little bit more i think that would really help them to develop and um because they already greenlit the episode so it's like maybe you'll give them more to work with um because these changes that they made are very easy to fix in my opinion I think they're very easy to fix so yeah yeah but again i'm still open to talking more about avatar i just ran out of things to say on my own <laughs> for it at the moment i think um yeah okay so what what we're doing here, we're just cleaning up the, the outfit. Uh, I decided to change this backpack thing that he's wearing. Uh, I'm going to keep the backpack, but I want to make it one of those that is kind of shaped like a, a pear on the back side of it. And you have that strap. Um, I guess that would connect probably here. So it's probably going to look like this. And um, you might not even see this much of the backpack, honestly. But uh, 
but yeah. And still need to change his face, but I can get to that later. One thing I, I do want to do, I want to keep these boots. I need to find some cool boots to reference for him, though. Um, let me see. Um, but, yeah, What's a good reference? Is this Lenny Kravitz? Hmm. So I want them to look cool. Maybe, maybe I might need to tone down the boot game though. Maybe I just need to shorten them because these are not quite the vibe. Um, let me see. Me, uh, me, not you, me. High. Oh, these aren't that bad. Some like more utilitarian, like that, more useful. Let's try Pinterest. Maybe Pinterest will have some stuff. Christian says, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm curious to see how they handle book two. I feel like there's so much going on that there's no way they can fit it. Everything in eight episodes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's one of those things where, you know, I think they were waiting to see how many people would like it. And, uh, because you know, they made some changes to the story that involves time that they like like they didn't reveal when Sozin's comet would return because of the fact they didn't know if it was going to get greenlit which i think is a smart change but yeah condensing so much into so few episodes is not good um and i think given the constraints i think they did a pretty good job at that like the, i i don't have a problem with the condensing that they did at all my issues with the show stem from the writing and the dialogue mostly. Like there's some parts that just are a little too exposition heavy for my taste. And uh, some of the subtle lore changes I don't like. Like I said, I didn't like the Spirit World episode very much at all. But some other things I thought they did relatively well. Um, Hmm. Trying to find the right sneakers or boots for my boy to wear. Don't know if I'll be able to find exactly what I'm looking for, which I guess is, you know, part of my job as the concept artist to be able to, you know, figure this out. But I would like a reference, you know? Just a good, solid reference to use. But I'm not seeing anything. Unless I do something like this, but I think I gave shoes like this to Cairo already. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I did. Let's double check. What I what I give him? Oh, actually, not so much. Okay, you know what? Yeah, we'll we'll do this. We'll do something like this and combine with the boots look. One thing I do like about Photoshop more than Clip Studio is that Clip Studio, whenever you copy and paste something, it automatically puts it in the top left corner. In Photoshop, it just puts it in the middle. Um, yeah, I just finished the Spirit World episode. The changes they made were pretty confusing. Yeah, it was it was a little odd. But the next episode, Masks, I think is is wonderfully done. I think that's the best episode of the show so far. Give him sandals. Why not? Let the dogs out. <laughs> well. To answer your question of why not, they're doing parkour on a lot of buildings. I'm pretty sure that's probably not a good idea. Um, also, I hope they let Aang be more of a kid and crack jokes sometimes. Yeah, I think they did much better than the um, <laughs> the movie that shall not be named, but has been alluded to at least twice in the stream. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely should have Aang be more goofy. Um, what? Oh, that reminds me. One thing I did not like in the first episode... I felt so bad for this for this moment. There was a scene where Aang just finds out he's the Avatar, and he goes to be consoled by like Appa, and he's like, "I can't be the Avatar. I like to, you know, play airball with my friends, and I like to goof off." And and I'm like, "Why are you saying this? Why don't you just show it?" Like, like that bothered me. I was like, "That is so, so bad." If it were me, if I were to change that moment, what I would have done. I would have 
use that whole thing he said he likes to do and ch and use that for the opening. Um, like the first time we see Aang is when he's like on this top of this building and he jumps off and he's kind of like showboating. I'm like, why couldn't you combine that with him being with his friends, like him playing air ball or something like that, or, you know, just those little things. It would have been so much better, uh, so much more fun visually to see that. And, um, and you could keep the rest of that, um, the way it is, you know, he could still struggle. He could still be contemplating, uh, his very existence, I guess, <laughs> as the Avatar. But I think they really could have done it. That was a classic show don't tell moment that they underutilized, unfortunately. There was no movie in Bossing Say. That's right. There was no movie. Yeah, they had him tell us instead of showing us. Yeah, it was just it was just kind of annoying. It was just kind of annoying. Um I mean he did I mean the actor, Gordon, uh he did his thing. I'm not mad at him. Uh, I think he's doing a great job as the character. He's do like he's he really embodies Aang a lot to me, and I think it's just the material that he's given that makes it a little tough. But uh, yeah, let me see which shoes did I give him again? Okay, I try and give everyone completely different shoes. Um, in this world. I actually, I kind of like what they're doing here with Pidge's shoes. I might actually mimic that a bit. Probably pull down the legs a bit more. Also, the Boomy episode specifically bothered me when it came to him being too serious. Yeah, you missed it, but I did talk about Boomy uh, earlier in the stream. I was I was not happy with how I treated him. Uh, I just didn't like him at all. Um, but but I did like the little Easter egg. They actually had some uh, statues in the in the palace or whatever, and it was Flopsy. I thought that was really cool. I thought that was a good touch. And also, there is a very um, uh, there's a lot of hybrid animals missing. <laughs> I really, I really miss it. And there's a couple of lines where they're where they refer to animals as like a singular animal, like they said puppy, and like one other thing. I'm like, where's the like why why not? Or they had chicken, I think, in there too. I was like, no, it's possum chicken, or you you know, like give me some hybrids, guys. You don't even have to show us. Just I mean, mention like a puppy lizard or something. I don't know. Like give give us something. Okay. Um, again, just checking out how it's gonna work. I think I can give him some slimmer pants, um, and maybe I'll just have him completely tucked in without the borders. Like I'm looking at this here, like in with Salam too. Those two characters, they're they're tucked in kind of, but they also feel like they're bunched up. I think I can do something a little more clean with this version. Just have it be simple like that. Sokka said Momo probably tastes like chicken. Yeah, that's what it was. I was like, no, he probably he tastes like possum chicken. Like they literally had they, they had it right there. <laughs> you know? Puppy, not a water puppy. Weird, right? Exactly. It would be funny though if all the animals were like regular, and then when it came to the bear for uh, Bosco or Bosco, they actually had like a hybrid. That would actually be kind of funny. Not a puppy doe or a puppy cub. Exactly, nothing. I think most of that was just due to budget. They've only shown Momo like three or four times in what I've seen. Yeah, that's that's true. They they didn't do a lot with um, Appa either. He was strangely absent. And I think that was budget reasons because. If I'm not mistaken, they gave Avatar a bigger budget than like Stranger Things. If I if I'm not mistaken, so uh, they did a lot. They did a lot of special effects with the bending and stuff. So it makes a lot of sense. And like I said, like their their costumes, they look great. I just wish they were like they looked a little bit more lived in than 
you know, instead of being like completely store bought um, and fresh, you know, but you could tell that they had a lot of uh, money to spend. I think a lot of the budget actually probably went to the Koi monster because water, from what I understand, water is the most difficult thing to do with CG. Um, probably fire as well, but like wa like water especially is really, really tough, I hear. Um, fun fact, in the aquarium hobby, there are kinds of fish we call water puppies, mostly bigger fish with a lot of personality like big puffer, puffer fish. Um, well, that's a fun, that is a fun fact. Speaking of budget, Netflix three body problem coming soon. Wait, what? Three? I don't get it. Is that? I don't get it. Um, sorry. Okay, so we got the jeans looking pretty good here. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling this. I'm kind of feeling Enzy. I might want to give him a little design on his shirt though. Um. What can we do that is simple? Oh, and he needs, I wanted to give him a device on his uh, his wrist too. So let me make sure I put a little note there, indicate that, almost forgot. Um, this little turtleneck. Hmm, what design can we put on here that's simple to replicate? That hasn't been done. We got this triangle. For Javen, he got another similar one for Zalam. Got the square here. Maybe uh, hmm. maybe I'll just do something like on the sleeves, like something like, like something that I did with Kayla. I gave her something like this. Yeah, we'll do something like that, and then get this uh, trim. Sure, that looks good. And then this foot is not there yet. Uh, oh wait. Interesting, Megan. I've heard a, a lot about the books. I don't want to go too far off from Avatar since that's what people are actually here for. <laughs> Hopefully they're here for shower boxers too, but we just spent the whole time talking about it. But the three body problem is the first in a trilogy of really, really weird sci-fi books. Oh, never heard of it. Okay. Wasn't NZ number six because all choices were number six. Um was he? I have to watch the previous stream because I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Um what do what, what do we make number oh I remember because the the sketches we did. Yeah, the sketches. They we picked six for all of them, I think. Oh shoot, I forgot he has knee pads too. Okay, let's let's give him those little knee pad designs. Um when I heard they were trying to make an adaptation, I was like, bruh, oh man. Did you guys catch leads from the vine playing whenever Zuko and Iroh had a moment? I did not. My friend caught that. He said that I was playing during um, the funeral scene, uh, and I missed it. So I have to rewatch that. But I, I am aware of it, which is another great touch. Like, like here's the thing about it: I fully, fully believe that the showrunners and the writers are major fans of the original show. Um, I fully believe that, and I think that given the constraints. They did a really good job. Like I said, there were just a couple of issues with the writing that didn't quite pan out the way that I think they were expecting. Um, but overall, I am impressed with what they did. Like, I'm really impressed with how they were able to combine these things. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was something. I tear bended in that scene. I did. Yeah, I, I missed it somehow. Um, Shame on me, right? Shame on me. Um, yeah. Um, does that look cool? I don't know if I like that just yet. Maybe if I did it on the forearms instead. Let's 
try that. Yeah, this this feels a little bit better already. Yeah, I like that more, I think. I don't know what color change it's going to be, because I do kind of... Hmm, I do like that just turtleneck just being blank, though. You know? Um, the funeral scene was probably my favorite new scene so far. I think... What was my favorite scene? Okay, um, my favorite scene is the end of the Masks episode where Zuko comes back after being the Blue Spirit. They, uh, when he's with, when he gets on the boat, that scene right there, they actually show it in the trailer. I won't say specifically where, because I, I have some spoiler-free sections, um, I guess. But yeah, that moment was really, really good. Really, really solid. Absolutely loved it. And the shoes. I think I'm gonna just steal from this a little bit. Put a little dark space under here. Now, the cool thing is I'm at a stage where things are still subject to change. Like, yeah, this took me an hour and 20 minutes, but that, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much. So that's not that much time. So I really have the luxury of being able to do a lot of stuff with this. So we did a lot with the buy. Let's let's adjust the face a little. Let's, let's make some changes. Um, you know what I need to do? I need to copy this, merge. Cause I, I keep turning this on and off and it's annoying me. Okay. So the sharp chin or the round chin. Let's see. that a little sharper. And I think I want to get it like a good nose shape too. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here into my character section for Shadow Boxers. Okay, I don't go to my pens, that's fine, I guess. And I am going to go to characters. I'm just gonna observe people. You just look at their noses <laughs> and see what happens. Um, let's see if I can find someone. I don't think I've done this. And the four characters. Let me see. You know what? I actually kind of like this face overall. Let's let's change it a bit. So let's get rid of this nose. Change the opacity a little bit just to try some stuff. Might be a little too high. Let's move it down a bit. Megan says, don't forget to like, please. And I agree with her, please. 
my self-esteem needs a boost and you guys are all responsible for it so please like the video if you have not already um okay Ooh. let's gonna check something oh, what's maybe not i think I, <laughs> I think i just lost my mind for a moment um Yeah, because when, when I did the faces, yeah, I kept it kind of simple. I didn't really go into that much detail with it, but we're just exploring. That's all we're doing, doing a little exploration. And also in the sketch, I didn't really draw his eyes either because he was covered up with the goggles. He could just be one of those characters that permanently has them on, though. Maybe you just never see his eyes. That might be fun, actually. You know, maybe I should, maybe I should consider that. So what I'll do, I'll just kind of lower the opacity here. I will change the color and just give him some goggles. Um, yeah, something like this. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, something like that. Amanda says, what's everyone working on tonight? I'm painting a burger and milkshake. I am so hungry right now. And you know what's funny? I was actually thinking about getting a burger uh, from Heart House. If you guys don't know what Heart House is, it's a, um, it is a plant-based uh, burger spot that Kevin Hart owns. And it's like 15 minutes away and they have a drive-thru. So it's excellent. Go. Yeah, I'll probably make it so that you can't even see his eyes unless it's like a very specific angle or something. And because this is an animation, I can choose when that is. Or animation slash comic. You guys know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. No, I mean, yeah, that's looking good. That's looking good. Now let's fill in those eyes. So I think all the expression from his is really going to come from his brows. Then maybe not all the expression, but a lot of them. Now I just got to make it. Well, how do I make him look cross-eyed while wearing goggles? That is funny. Um, yeah, he's definitely not quite there yet. I think I got to move this over a bit. I really made homeboy cross-eyed while wearing goggles. That is an accomplishment. He don't care if it's dark out. The goggles complete his look. Exactly. Biggie Smalls always had sunglasses on at night. <laughs> like, that was just part of the look. Um, funny you should ask. I'm working on Shadowboxer's comic thumbnails. Yes, yes, we have more stuff. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep up with the schedule of my life and Shadowboxer's, but it's coming, guys. It's coming. It's coming. Um, Mark says, I'm still waking up, but I want to do some sketchbook stuff today. Nice. Christian says, I'm working on some props. Ooh, excellent. And then Lily Sapphire says, ooh. Yeah. So we, we're we still cooking over here. We're still cooking. Let's see. Let's. I actually really like this. I like. I think I'm going to keep the goggles on. It, get, it makes them different from the others. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really feeling this. I'm really feeling this. I feel like there's some detail missing on the top portion of him. Um, oh, I know what it is. I was going to give him uh, uh, hair that was partially dyed. So like this section up here, it's 
going to be a whole different color. So I think I'm going to do the, like this blonde and this be uh, like brown, brownish black hair. I'm just sketching some unusual expressions like makeup applying poses. Oh, nice. That's awesome. That's super fun. Manette, oh my goodness, what's happening? I don't know if you've been on this whole time and I just missed you, but what's happening, Manette? I'm trying to get myself to work on comic thumbs. I did finally do digital paintings to make some pet puzzle box things for my sister and friend. That's awesome. I like how everyone's doing art here. That's so much fun. For those of you guys who are not doing art, what are you doing? Are you just purely watching and seeing shadow boxers come to life? Because I've never done that. I've, I've always worked on stuff whenever I watch a podcast or a live stream. I don't think I've ever just sat there and just observed all the way through. To be fair, I don't even think that's the purpose of it. But, you know. Hmm. Maybe I can do something like this. Fill that in. I don't know. I don't know yet. I'm not sold on the design of his shirt, but it's fine. Okay, and then to go back here for this. Do I like his face? I feel like I want to make his brows a little more angular. He's got a lot of softness in his face, so let's counteract that with some more angular brows. Can make him thin though. Javen's got the thick brows. Javen's got thick brow. Yeah. It's the look. He looks like a guy who's like really into fashion. But do you guys get that feeling too? Just by looking at him? Here, give him a little bit of a shine. Or, hmm, how should I do it? Should be, if it's flat, it could be like this. If it's more round, I could do like this. What do you guys think? Should I give it more like a round highlight um, like this? Or should I just do like a streak um, as if it were flat? What do you guys think? Hi, I've been here the whole time just lurking. Oh, snap. Okay, well, hello. I've been in a weird and very frustrated mood lately. Work stuff, people are disappointing. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I understand that people can be frustrating. I've dealt with some frustrating people in my past recently, so I understand. I hope you get through it. Um, yeah, I could see him wearing some of those weird Balenciaga shoes. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Kathy says, I totally agree. Uh, sorry to hear. Hope spending time with us. Uh, and other friends can help lift you up. Balenciaga shoes. What What are some... Help me out with the Balenciaga shoes. Let's see. Because um, maybe I could get some inspiration. Oh, wow. Are these the ones you're talking about? These first ones? Are these like... Wait, have I seen these? Is this the, is this a sock trainer? So it's like socks with a shoe sole? That's bizarre. Yeah, he cares for looking his best by the pose being similar to Zalam too. Makes me wonder if he's trying to be at his level in styles. That wasn't the intention. Um, I just didn't want to do like a character with just straight up hands at the side. It's kind of boring sometimes. Um, but that is funny. I like that. I like streaks for the goggles trying to keep to less friendly shape language. Ah, okay. I like that idea. Shh, you did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I did it on purpose. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know them by name specifically, but there's so many weird shoes they make. Kathy says the shock shoes. That is really bizarre. That is really bizarre. These must be it. Uh, that's not. I was at Nordstrom today. I could have gotten me some some of these. In LA, no one would question it either. No one would question it. 
All right, I'm gonna go with uh, Megan's opinion on this one. I'm gonna do a streak because she's right. The shape language being less friendly really helped. Do like a bigger streak and then we'll make a thinner one like here. Yeah, that looks dope. That looks dope. You should wear those weird Balenciaga shoes as an amazing insult. <laughs> that is funny. I like that. All right. I think I think we're looking pretty good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a mask real quick on his uh, the nude form underneath. If I can remember how to do it, is, I think it's a race, right? Yeah. It's opposite of Photoshop, so it always trips me up. Yeah. Okay, I think I have to redraw that arm because it's not convincing me that he's actually like putting it on his um, his side. But otherwise, I like this design for the most part. Um, I do want to change something real quick. Uh, where's my clothes? I don't like how the knees and the uh, cloak like line up exactly. So what I think I might do, I could either lower it or I could lower the back of it. Maybe I'll do the back. Yeah, let's change that here. Jordan OMG, I'm looking it up. It gets so much weirder. Crocs with heels. Wait, wait, wait. Crocs with heels? Hold on a second. Crocs with Siaga. Yo, what? What? This looks like a Photoshop job. Oh my goodness. That is horribly ugly. They even got someone with spikes. Oh, that's not the heel. Wow. Okay. How many of you would rock any of these shoes? Just out of curiosity. Balenciaga makes some wacky stuff. <laughs> yeah, they do. They sure do. They sure do. Okay, so let me let me redo this um, here. I think this will actually help it. And then, uh, actually, let me turn this off, lower that opacity, and then I have to redraw this just real quick. Oh, that's right, I forgot to do the, the thing on the wrist. That's gonna be tricky because I need to design it first, exactly what I want, but I can do a little placeholder. Basically, give him like an Apple Watch. Can make it a little clunkier if I wanted. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I'm feeling this. What do you guys think? You guys like Enzy? As a design, you may not like him as a character in the story. I don't know. That's not the focus right now. <laughs> yeah, Crocs just make anything. They even have cowboy boots. Oh, that's uh, that looks uncomfortable too. Enzy is getting bullied by chat so much more than the rest of the crew. <laughs> you know what? That's totally fine. That's totally fine. I I actually I think that's fun, honestly. Um, I love the design. I like him. He looks cool. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Lily and Christian. Appreciate that. All right. So we only got about 20 minutes left in the stream, uh, which is hard to believe. These things go by so quickly. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick, uh, tight, rough pass. Uh, hopefully, I can get that done. 
in the 20 minutes. I don't think it should be a problem because uh, uh, it's all kind of laid out for me. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what we get. Let's get my right, the right pencil. It's still going to be sketchy. So again, don't don't mind that aspect. But I like this stage because it really helps me to like solidify <clears throat> solidify stuff. Really make sure I'm capturing exactly what it is that I want. And it's fun because you know after a certain point, doing all these character designs for it, I create my own process and because I'm basically the director of this, the creator, director, you know, all, all the president, whatever titles you want to give me, I have a vision in my head that I can execute sometimes without the need for a ton of redraws and things like that, which is different in like the industry. Cause when you're in the industry, you have to abide by what other people want. And I don't have to do that here. Cause this is what I want. Shadow boxes is my world. Yeah. Yeah. So in that in that time frame, are there any other avatar related comments or questions? Um, I admit I drank most of my water and I kind of got out of the bathroom. <laughs> so we definitely got the hydration fulfilled. Um, but yeah, you can make your interns do all the redraws. That's it's me. I am the intern. <laughs> I think the proper way to say that is it's me. I am interns, plural. <laughs> but yes, it's true. It is true. Um, all right, let's get the ear. Get the little sign here. And then we're going to come in here with the neck. I think, I think Enzi's looking pretty good. I can't believe this. I, the whole crew is almost done. Like a few months ago, there were just characters in my head who I didn't even have the right names for them. And uh, now they're, they're very close to being living, breathing characters, which is really exciting. Christian says, not that the Netflix avatar is terrible, but I think it does reinforce my personal opinion that animation is the superior medium. You know what? It's it's true. You know, like, I think we all knew kind of going in that this was a cash grab for Netflix, right? The, the, the original show did so well on Netflix back in 2020 when everything changed. Um, <laughs> some of you guys caught that. Um, but, um, but... That showed it so well. They're like, you know, we could still make money off of this. It was like number one for like 60 something days in a row. It was the number like it. Nothing like that ever been done. Um, and so clearly they're like, hey, let's get in on this thing by the creators. Creators left. And, you know, it, it didn't need to be made. It really didn't. Um, but I appreciate the changes that they're making. Uh, the good ones, at least. And I appreciate that they're trying to breathe new life into it because it is such a great story. Um, it has changed my life personally. You know, if it weren't for that show, I don't think shadow boxers would even be a thing, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I, maybe something, some, maybe I would have created something, but not, it, I don't think it would look anything like what it does now. Um, and so, yeah, the, the original is always going to have my heart. It's classic. Uh, I'll, pr I'll most likely show my kids <laughs> one day, but um, yeah, that's just that's just how it is. This is how it is. Didn't animation is definitely better. They grow so fast. That's true. That was a crazy reference. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, My kiddos. Yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. And the hands here. OK. 
pants are kind of uh, form fitting. NZ rocks skinny jeans. That's the best way to put it. But it ends, he's rocking the skinny jeans. He probably listens to Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy and what was it? Was it New Boys that did the song You're a Jerk? Was that them? I think that was them. Um, I mean, we all watched a 2D and made the search. Oh, we all would have watched a 2D animated The Search movie. That is true. That is so true. And I, I actually really hope that that's a movie that they want to develop because that would be dope. Um, even though the comic was already there. Yeah, I would totally watch The Search as a, as a film. It would be beautiful. Not NZ. He doesn't grow at all. <laughs> you know, there, there was this kid in my high school who was like five foot three as like a 10th grader. He was very small. And... Uh, his brother was taller than me, uh, so I assume he shot up at some point. But he was—he was definitely one of those small ones. <laughs> definitely one of those small ones. Shoes are almost there. Okay, so by the looks of it, I'll probably have the tight rough done uh, by the time the stream is over, but maybe even before. I might end a little early today. Question for you guys. Would you want to see the next stream as uh, like a avatar fan art stream or something since we've been talking about so much would you want to see me continue to do nz if so what stage would you want me to do like the clean line art would you want me to do the, uh, the coloring process uh what do you guys want to see from me i'm very curious so please comment uh in the chat or in the comment of section of this video um he really be getting the bullying i know right that indeed was the new boys those were great times i i question that the validity of that statement because that was not a great time for me in my life and uh man it was so annoying it was just annoying uh, you know people would be like yo bro can you jerk and i was like something about that seemed like i remember someone asked me that question and i didn't know what it was and i was like that sounds kind of invasive like i like guess like, there's something about that i just don't like as a question um yeah as a small one of my family some just don't graduate from being a shorty so we all blame our siblings for stealing all the tall jeans yeah i don't have siblings but i i uh remember my dad he commented on my height because there was a period of time where i hadn't seen him in like three years and he saw me i was like 21 he's like man i thought you'd be taller by now i was like you know what <laughs> you know what sir i don't need this <laughs> i like i like to see a gadget episode for Enzy. you know what? we do need a props episode there are some props that are going to be needed for the comics so that's actually not a bad idea I was in fifth grade, it was, so it was fun. Oh, okay, fifth grade. I was in, what grade was I in? I was in the ninth grade. I was going into high school, I think. No, 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 it was eighth grade. Eighth grade, going into ninth grade when that when that came out. And it was the most annoying thing ever. It was so frustrating. All you see is people wearing yellow skinny jeans and like lep with leopard prints on them or, or zebra prints. And it was just, it was just out of this world. It was so frustrating. So frustrating. Fan art is fine, but I enjoy the coloring process. I struggle a bit of values and, uh, and similar, so it's nice to see. Kathy says props episode. Props would be cool too. Okay, we can do a props episode. We'll do a props episode next week. Um, it may include like a couple of environments for this because there are some things that I do need to draw environment wise. I'm the shortest at five six. My brothers are six three and six seven. My neck hurts when I hurt. My neck hurts when I hang out with them. That's insane. I want design of the water tower. I've done some sketch of the water tower, actually, Megan. So that that could be included. That could be included. Props will be awesome. All right. So it seems like it's decided we're going to do a props stream. Um, 
So we got a lot of things that we can focus on. We got these goggles here for Enzi. We got the thing on his wrist. Um, we got uh, something that one of the officers is going to use. I won't say what that object is today, but it will be probably revealed next week. And then, yeah, there we go. Draw a pocket. And then the strap here. All right. Uh, oh, the knee. The knee stuff. I'll be honest, I'm rushing a little bit because I gotta use the bathroom and we're about to end the stream. So <laughs> I drink too much wire. We talk way too much about Avatar today. <laughs> um let's see mystery gadget that let's go i love to see a risk gadget i stink at making that kind of stuff you know what there's a lot of room for growth for me as well so we'll learn together uh but this is where we got for Inzi. um i'm probably gonna make a couple changes to him but uh overall i think he's in a pretty good spot so but, but just to show you again this is where we are with the crew we are you've seen Jaden many times we saw the design of Zalam and Cairo. Now we got Enzi. Still looking a little cross-eyed, but we're going to fix that. It's okay. Um, anyway, guys, I want to thank you all so much for being a part of the stream uh, and for allowing me to express my feelings and opinions on Avatar for basically two hours. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. And next week, we will be doing a prop stream. I'll come up with a list of things that I need for the comic, and we'll just do whatever fits. So you guys... Uh, take care and I'll see you next week. Peace.